Good afternoon and welcome to TMSA's Driver Recruitment Marketing, Driving Results in Tumultuous Times webinar. My name is Eileen Curran and I am the Vice President of Marketing Communication at Odyssey Logistics and Technology. And I'll be moderating this webinar and monitoring the chat and the Q&A section, section throughout the session. Thank you for joining us. TMSA's mission is to enable sales and marketing pros to learn about and advance the transportation and logistics industry through education, connections, and resources. And we're so much more than just an annual conference or today's webinar, which we're so excited to have you here for us with. It's a year-round networking and educational space for you to connect with other people who also know the transportation and logistics industry, as well as marketing and sales. We do a lot of things together. We have a lot of opportunities to engage with webinars, virtual roundtables, and we just came off of our annual conference, which was awesome in Florida. It's not the only thing we have though. We have webinars, we have, we have a recognition program, we have networking events coming up in St. Paul in September in Jacksonville in November, and our first ever executive summit coming up in October. So please be sure to frequent tmsatoday.org to learn all about our organization and take advantage of all the educational opportunities available to you. So now I'm gonna hand it over to our presenters, Lionel and Jason, and they will take you through the content for today. Okay, and I see the uh, presentation there, yeah. Okay, all right, well, let's get started. So. Um, just to uh, kick things off, I, I have this first slide here. This is really where this uh, Trailblazer uh, uh, award and, and campaign really had started. Uh, Jason, unbeknownst to, my, to me, had uh, this really nice uh, and glowing post on LinkedIn just talking about the success that our two teams have had. And it's really been a great relationship working with, uh, with uh, Sun well, close to a, a year now, but this was again several months ago. And then based on this uh, and being able to see where we were at, you know, uh, applying um, or putting that campaign into a, the TMSA competition seemed like a, a great fit, especially knowing the, uh, you know, conference was coming up and, and Jason and I have both been uh, long-standing members there. So just, uh, that was really how this got started in terms of why we're actually presenting today. But if we just go to the next slide, um, one of the things that I really want to take uh, a moment for Jason to speak about first is, is really just his view on this topic and and this issue for their business and it's with a special emphasis on that executive support and i remember when i was brand new at, at tmsa and, and still hear it now you know a common uh concern or complaint of of marketers and and sales is just a, a lack of of uh executive buy-in you know there's a large demand on getting drivers but uh, at the same time, it wasn't really uh, heavily funded. Uh, it was just expected that these drivers would come. So let's start off there, Jason. If you could just talk about how you looked at this uh, situation and, and you know, uh, you, that'll bring us up to the point where we're working together. But, you know, as a, a president, um, you know, why was this an important topic and how did you look at it? Yeah, thanks, Lionel. So for me, I, you know, this all really started when we began to have some meetings with our leadership team here at Sunwell, and, and I'm one of those people who, you know, uh, stands up from the table, you know, looks out the window, and one of the views that I had on that particular day was the fence where we keep all of our tractors, and I'm looking at the fence, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm seeing a, a, a number of tractors where the wheels aren't turning, right, and so, you know, in, 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 in trucking, it's really important to make sure that you've got your truck seated, and each one of those unseated vehicles has a, a cost every month of basically sitting on your property. So after staring out the window for a couple of minutes, I, I turned around and I said, what are we doing about these trucks? How many, how many drivers did we need? And then we got into a conversation about how we traditionally had done driver recruiting. And so we, we said, well, we need to do something different here because I've got probably five trucks sitting against the fence. That means we're, we're, our, our cost is about $10,000 a month because they're unseated, plus we're not making revenue on those trucks. So then that, that really started the conversation. And, and so that's how I gave Lionel a call and we, and we had the discussion. And I, and I told Lionel a couple of things. The first thing I said was, I need your help. Let's solve the problem. I know that you have experience in doing this and I trust you implicitly to get it done. And the second thing I said was, I'm probably gonna be your, um, you know, a big biggest bottleneck in this process, right? That 
if you need to come to me in order to get things done, then it's not going to move very fast just because of the level of work that I'm engaged in. And so I, I said, what we're going to do is this, is I'm going to let you run this thing and I'm going to team you up with the right people in, in the organization. We're going to start a cadence. You're going to have meetings with them and you're going to have the discussions with them. And then we're going to take a look at the results. And that didn't mean that I just, you know, walked away from the whole thing because I was very involved in what was going on. But I recognize that A, we have a problem, and B, that I'm a bottleneck, and C, that, uh, you know, Alina with his experience, along with the experience of my team, we're going to be the ones to uh, uh, make this happen and give us the results that we're looking for. Okay. Great. Well, thanks Thanks for that overview. overview. And yeah, a great example of, of just how, again, right from the very beginning, you, you position it as an important uh, topic and, and got people in place to be able to knock it out. And yeah, it's been great because we've been able to go from, you know, sharing things and getting approval to now just being able to run with things, right? And, and uh, you know, uh, have you less in, involved in the, the process, right? So that's good. Well, let's uh, keep keep moving on here. Let's jump into uh, what was what the campaign was all about, what we're doing and, and uh, how it all works. So this is just a real brief uh, a summary and Jason has touched on a couple of these things, but in, in terms of where they were at before, and, and Jason was new to the organization and then brought us in uh, around last August, but there was very few drivers going to the website. Uh, it wasn't necessarily clear what the value proposition for Sunwell was. And, and actually, I was, I shouldn't say actually, but I was very impressed when we started talking uh, about what that value proposition was because it is a very compelling offer for truck drivers and it's a great opportunity. So there's a lot of opportunity to improve the, the messaging there. Uh, what I mean by ads being me too, I'm sure uh, many of us have, have seen these ads as well where uh, a company may say, yes, we're, we're on social or we're on Facebook and they have 10 posts and it's all like now hiring owner operators, right? And, and it's really not the, the way to be able to do it. So every ad looks uh, identical. Every company says they have great pay, great miles, you know, great, great pe people. Uh, so again, trying to find some way to differentiate the, the company. And there definitely wasn't, again, a, a clear strategy. And there was also at the time, you know, a, a good amount of uh, um, turnover, which was leading to those unseated trucks. So that was really where we got uh, started. And then we took action uh, right away. So just to get into the next part here. Okay, yeah. So again, and to talk about some of the action items that we took here. So I've got a number of them listed. So just on, uh, go on more there, please, Eileen. Thank you. All right, so basically a, a couple of things that we wanted to do was really focus first of all on the value proposition. So our first day we didn't roll in and launch ads and, and landing pages. We, we really took some time to be able to do that pre-work which was uh, was important. We did know that it was August and uh, a big recruiting season was coming up and this was an important topic so we couldn't take our time but we did uh, make sure to, to do some of this pre-work. So things that we, uh, looked at was uh, how to position the guaranteed pay and home time and this is something that we can't uh, take any credit from and give uh, Jason and the team at, at Sunwell a lot of credit because you know things like guaranteed uh, pay is is unfortunately not uh, common and as most of us uh, if not all know a lot of truck drivers have difficulty predicting what their paycheck will even look like right and then significant home time and even their OTR drivers have a, a real weekend like they're, they're rolling in on Friday afternoons and I, I realize that doesn't work in, in every business at every size but it's something that they do have to, to offer. We also surveyed the drivers and this I thought was a, a really uh, interesting project because there uh, was around uh, 55 to 60 drivers. So we had a survey going out to them to judge their motivation, not how motivated were they, but to ask like, why did you choose to be a truck driver? Um, why did you choose uh, Sunwill, you know, as a company to drive with? And then there was some other questions asking for feedback and asking how they heard about us. But it also opened uh, a channel directly to Jason. So it was a good opportunity for Jason being somewhat new in the organization to actually have one-to-one -one conversations with drivers and build that relationship and, and show that he was there for them. And, and again, build, build a level of trust with the existing drivers. So that was good. Uh, also, you know, one of the things that we did was uh, the story brand exercise. And uh, I'm sure most of us are familiar with Donald Miller, uh, you know, and, and his, uh, his processor of the story brand, but we did this exercise and I actually have a screenshot coming up in, in uh, just a moment here. Uh, we, we went through this exercise and this, this would have been last uh, August, September. And one of the common themes that kept coming up 
was how drivers are treated at a lot of companies and how Sunwell treats them so much differently. And that was it. You know, keep in mind the background of COVID and truck driving being an essential service. You know, the, the, the theme of your essential be treated like it came up and it really seemed to uh, encapsulate what Sunwell was doing and, and knowing that the right thing is always right and doing whatever they could to treat uh, drivers the right way. So that was something that helped us position the, the jobs uh, quite a bit different and uh, really seemed to um, be uh, accepted by the by the leads that we were talking to and it helped convert a lot of drivers. So would you say, Jason, that was like a, a valuable exercise back in the, you know, this is back several months now, but just to be able to get us all on the same page and know even how to speak about the company? Yeah, for sure. I mean, and of course, we took a 360 degree view of it, right? I think that the driver survey was very, very insightful. And plus, it gave us a uh, baseline, too, for being able now to take additional surveys and know, okay, well, what have we progressed on and what has gotten better? I mean, everybody knows that, you know, there's three things that a driver typically looks for when they're uh, looking for a company to drive for, right? Driver pay, home time, and safe vehicles. And, and so I think through our process, we really were able to, to peg that, but then also turn that into a value proposition and then use it to communicate out to the market and to what that, whatever those uh, uh, driver applicants that might be looking for roles, make sure that uh, we, that they knew that that was important to us and that we were continuing to, to project that correct message. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so I'll just have a couple examples of this over the next uh, few slides here. I realize this is super tiny, but we'll make the deck available after the, the presentation so you can actually see the different steps, but you see where we started and, and the, the driver was a character and then the transitional piece at the very end there touches on that. So we'll just uh, keep going here. Uh, so an, another uh, related project was looking at the buyer's journey and treating um, the, the driver uh, like a customer, right? And, and going through the awareness stage, consideration stage, and, and decision stage. And I know I've heard in the past, you know, lots of demand, you know, we need drivers today, you know, let's put an ad out and we'll hire them tomorrow. You know, one of the things I was able to see uh, a long time ago within HubSpot is that some drivers would engage for 18 months or so before they're ready to apply. So it was really recognizing that there are drivers actively looking to be able to to move to a new company, but there's also many that are just passively looking. So we want to make sure that we're able to speak to them at all different uh, different levels. And this was really a, a great exercise because we were able to look at what are the emotions that drivers are actually feeling, whether it's you know, nervousness or frustration or pride, you know, and we even talked about their spouses, you know, and, and what are those decisions like, who, who are we bringing in at which stage and what marketing um, communication and campaigns and, and tactics are we taking at, at which stages? So that helped out again in the early stage, but let, let's keep moving here. Uh, thank you. Okay, so then uh, now that we had a good idea as to how we wanted to position Sunwill and what we were looking for, now it was time to move into asset development. So these are some examples of things that uh, that we got in place fairly quickly. Um, one of the things that we did uh, was we created a, a number of landing pages. So there was a generic one that was more like a web page, which is this one, um, and, and then we had some specific uh, landing pages for OTR drivers, regional, local, and then um, uh, yard hostler uh, roles as well. And we've, we've expanded beyond that, but that was where we started out. One thing I will say is uh, right now, you know, we have a project underway uh, for building a new website for Sunwell. So theirs was actually, when Jason uh, had, had uh, got to the company, it was put together fairly quickly and it, it's not uh, a large or a, a old, or, um, you know, robust uh, website. So what we were able to do with the use of these pages through working through HubSpot is we were really able to sidestep that and make sure that we were sending all of these leads to uh, you know mobile friendly pages you know that were modern they were clean you know easy to navigate the forms were simple to fill out so that was a good way in the short term you know to be able to work around the the uh, issue of of uh, that that website anyway so this is just a, again the the beginning part of the page and the next one will show a little bit more copy. 
and then uh, there's the just the form underneath that and then oh and then some of the value proposition um, again the specific items around pay and home time and so on and then there'll just be a form on the next slide here so that was basically it and that was the first page that we got up and running and that was on their their website the existing one and then we as we launched ads then we had additional landing pages in place as well so we'll just keep moving on here um, so the next couple of things that we did was we created a, a good amount of content and this was really like run and, guy, run and gun uh, style content. It was actually right after TMSA last summer. Uh, you know, I came and visited Sunwell and Jason and uh, his team and, and I, we worked on putting uh, this content together. But again, it's not uh, elaborately shot, uh, hyper, like, um, you know, expensive uh, budget. Uh, it was again done with you know just uh, one or two sh uh, shooters and a couple drivers is telling a story but we wanted to be able to capture those initial stories and feature some of their drivers so we had a uh, local driver the, the the one just before this tyrone and then um carl's here uh, tyrone's was really popular and he was super charismatic and jason i know we've done some videos where you've used his tagline but he's like son will baby come on down and uh anyway it, it was great and uh, again really charismatic driver not every every driver is like that of course but that was good and then we have a couple other uh you know driver videos just as examples here yeah so again we had them for all the different roles uh we built pages that had all the, the testimonials you know here's one that we have just coming out this is uh, chris a newer driver this is just the the thumbnail but a great story about you know someone that uh covid turned his life upside down and and he's so thankful of what uh sunwell's been able to do for him and and he's a you know, productive driver now on, on the, the fleet there so um Anyway, and he actually, we don't have time to get into it today, but I had a chance to speak with him a couple weeks ago and he just talked about all the companies he looked at and just really how impressed he was with how um, Sunwell handled the process and everything they promised, that they did. For example, Chris was told that he would be called Tuesday at noon. That was exactly when he got the call. And, uh, you know, thankfully he joined our team and we moved him forward. Okay, so that's a little bit about the, the, those uh, different assets there that were created. So I'll just keep moving on here. Okay, so now that we had the value part put to, to bed for the most part, we had some preliminary uh, assets in place. Now what we were focusing on is the, the, techno uh, the, the technology and the execution of our strategy and our plan. So uh, uh, thankfully, uh, Sunwell was actually already using HubSpot. However, they were using it on the... Uh, uh, logistics and, and customer side they weren't using it on the driver side and we're huge uh, fans of HubSpot and our an official solutions provider so we were able to roll in really quickly and be able to get HubSpot up and running and Jason's very familiar with it as well so that great it was re greatly reduced the amount of time it took us uh, to be able to get uh, him and the, the team up to speed uh, but we actually built a full recruitment pipeline so it's in the same account as the sales team but again it's completely segmented so I've got a couple examples of what you can see here in uh, you know within HubSpot obviously there's lots to show but I'll just show a couple uh, quick slides here so this is just showing the deals uh, pipeline so basically what we have is when someone is filling out a form then a deal will be created and they're an MQL, so marketing qualified lead, then they're moved to SQL, and then uh, moved uh, forward to their application being completed. Now, an interesting thing here is one of the, the issues that we found when we were doing our initial audit in our, our first month uh, working together with Sunwell is um, found that it was really challenging actually to fill an application. So Sunwell uh, was using 10th Street at the time and they still are. That is the main portal for drivers to fill out all of their information. So it's very uh, helpful for all the document control and it's a critical part of the uh, interview process. However, we did identify that it was a big roadblock at the very beginning and we were also losing visibility once uh, people were going in there because HubSpot wasn't uh, in, in place at the time. So we had decided that you know why are we asking people to fill out this really detailed uh, application if we don't even know they're a good fit yet so that's why all of the forms on those different landing pages are more like a quick application it asks enough information to make a qualified decision but not so much that it takes them too long and and they have a drop off so basically we're managing everything up until the point where they're an sql then 
one of uh, Jason's team will uh, send someone into 10th Street, then they get a notification that the application is completed and they continue on. And then, and, and then that's when our team's not involved anymore in, in those leads. So if we just go to the, the next slide, a couple other things that we'll be able to see here is again, you can see the, the key stages, right? Closed one and um, no CDL. So one of the things that we found out, uh, Jason, remember this uh, when we first launched it is uh, we were identifying a lot of people applying that didn't have CDLs yet. And, you know, uh, obviously we're looking for experienced, qualified drivers that are, are really ready to go right away. So we made the decision after some, some back and forth that, you know, rather than just rejecting these people totally, uh, you know, we can keep that pipeline open, but we actually just park them in, uh, you know, in, in the parking lot where, where we don't need to uh, do anything with them. They get notified about, you know, what to expect. But at first we had all these applications coming in and Jason's team had to look at everyone and disqualify them. So we now have a workflow in place where if someone doesn't have a CDL, the recruitment team doesn't even have to look at it or touch it or even know about it. And, and they just get pushed off to the side. So if there is ever something uh, like a non-driving job that we wanted to promote, we have all of these people interested in trucking and logistics that we could uh, promote that to. Uh, or if Sunwell decides to have a partnership with a driving school or to have their own driving program, again, we, we have all of those contacts that we would be able to uh, a tap at any time yeah okay and, and uh, Jason just jump in any any time too if you have any comments as as we're going along here well I think the, the, the real piece that was key here is that the HubSpot allowed us to put the workflow in so that at every stage too we were able when when a when a potential driver or a candidate uh, completed a stage you're able to get a message back from us right and 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 in that message it gave them also a uh, variety of, of, of different ways uh, to communicate with us. And, and, and oftentimes, um, you know, even if it was text, so we would ask them, hey, how do you prefer to be contacted? Is it email, is it text, is it phone call? And some would say text. And then one of the integrations that uh, your team wanted to put into HubSpot was the, the ability to text so that we could text right out of HubSpot and, and be able to uh, keep record of that um, conversation. Yeah, yeah, great, great point. That's a great segue to this next slide. So this is just an example of uh, an OTR driver that was uh, hired. And actually, Eileen, you can go to that next slide because uh, it just has the little uh, boxes come around things. So a couple of things that you that I wanted to point out here. I'll start with what Jason just mentioned. On the very right hand side, you can see where it says SMS. So all of the texting that's happening with the drivers. And their, their, their team spends a lot of time in this uh, texting tool. And it's nice because everything gets dumped right into HubSpot. So we can actually see all of that in the contact record. So that's one thing there. And then in the middle section, you can see the activity. So all of every time that Derek, in this case, comes to the website, fills out a form, has a call, has a meeting, sends a text, it's all recorded in the center central area here. And a really important section in the top left if you notice, we have uh, the annual uh, value. So this might be new to some of you, but we really uh, do focus on uh, providing and generating re results and value to a business. We're not just doing marketing for marketing sake. Ultimately, every driver that Sunwell or any of your companies hire is generating uh, re revenue, right? That's the whole point of, of attracting them. So what we were able to look at is if we hire an over-the-road driver, what is the revenue contribution from that driver? And in this case, it's around 264000 Now, it's not the profit. Uh, that would be great. But again, this is a revenue contribution. But still, we're able to look at that number. And then now we know if we recruit 10 drivers, that's $2.64 million. And we can now look at, well, what was the investment to generate that revenue? And then Jason, and this is what he's going to really care about is, he's making the decision, is that a, a worthwhile venture or not, right? Um, and, and we'll talk more about the numbers in a little bit, but, but again, we're able to tie that right in at the individual contact level. Okay, um, so let's keep going. And again, well, we will have lots of time for, uh, or you know, lots of time yeah, for questions and answers after. So please let me know. Uh, Jason, you mentioned yeah uh, about this too. Again, having the workflows in place. This is that CDL one uh, I gave an example of here, um, and I won't spend much more time on this because we have already talked about it. But again, we're trying to provide a personalized experience as efficiently as possible, and, and HubSpot helps out a lot with that. Okay, so we'll just go to the next slide, and then probably right to the the next one there. Yeah. Okay, so here's an example too of uh, one of the things that we're able to see uh, very easily within HubSpot, and these are all of the different lists. So this is quite 
uh, the screenshot is quite old now, um, but what we're able to see is every single driver that applies on any of the forms, we tag them as drivers. So again, we're able to uh, distinguish them from all of the, the, the freight customers, logistics customers, and, and so on. And then we're able to see how many are local, regional, OTR. And the reason that we want to see this, and I'm not telling anyone something they don't know here, but uh, we all know as marketers that we want to have the right message in front of the right person at the right time. So if we have a, an urgent need for a local driver, we don't want to send an email to all of the OTR drivers, right? And, and conversely, we don't want to send, you know, an OTR message to local drivers. Um, so, and sometimes we have all those positions, but sometimes it's very specific. So we want to make sure that we can have, uh, the, again, the, the specific message to the specific person. There. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll keep moving here. All right, so the, the fourth category here now, again, with the, uh, you know the the positioning and some assets and technology now is really moving into uh, getting advertisement uh, in place in in various different channels here. So I have a couple examples. We won't spend too much time on this section, but it was definitely very uh, critical for us. Uh, so we'll start off here. If you just go to the next slide, we have uh, some examples of those Facebook ads. So again, even though those videos were very very uh, simple, they were anywhere from 30 to probably two, uh, 30 seconds to two minutes. Um, again, there, there were great assets that we were able to show and have lots of engagement with, with them and use them in various uh, capacities. So those are those first three uh, campaigns or, or uh, ads. And then here's another one. This is more specific to just a, an OTR driver. So this is an actual job post within the Facebook environment. The other ones weren't job related and they weren't special category ads. They were just regular videos that we then had uh, have boosted and turned into to ads. Okay, so the next one here. Okay, so again, just another example here of uh, this was a generic uh, one where it was looking for all three types of job uh, of jobs. Yeah, and there's another one here with with Paul just trying up different thumbnails to be able to see what what grabs uh, you know people's attention the most. And again, you notice we still are able to continue on with that. Your essential be treated like it. Okay, so we'll keep going. All right, uh, we also had launched uh, Google Ads. So this is just a couple examples of various uh, ads that we have now. Not every driver type we uh, had Google Ads running for really depended on the urgency and the, the revenue contribution, but we were able to get those in place. So both search ads and display ads in the uh, Google network there. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, so this was, uh, again, some of the display ads, and we've done various different versions, you know, to be able to be floating around, following someone on the internet. And then a couple other channels here, just real quick. Uh, next one is, um, yeah, this is Craigslist, so we're able to have those in the different areas. Again, very inexpensive, you know, we're spending, I think, for, uh, you know, one post, it's about $25 for, for a month. Uh, but again, we can be very uh, tactical based on the specific region that we're looking for drivers. And then uh, the next one I believe is in Indeed here. So we do have uh, Indeed uh, jobs in place um, in most regions that we're recruiting in and for most roles, it does depend. I will say, and, and Jason and I have spoken about this uh, quite a bit, we were extra careful with, with Indeed. It, again, it can be uh, very powerful, but it, it is very costly at the same time. We do also recognize that there are many fleets that are spending into the six figures, you know, every year on Indeed. Part of it is they have a, a high demand for drivers and they need to fill a lot of uh, fill a lot of trucks, but also they don't necessarily know what's working and they're just spending money uh, and doing whatever they can, you know, to be able to get the, the drivers uh, in, into trucks, right? So we really are, are very, very um, watchful of this and every week we're looking at what our budget is and we report on it anytime we're able to turn indeed off completely or dial down the budget significantly we do that so it's something again like i'll talk about this wrapping things up but it's not a set it or forget it like we're looking at this uh, very closely uh, several times uh, throughout the the week here okay so we'll keep uh, moving on here and yeah again everyone knows how how competitive truck driving is um and and you know, Buffalo is, uh, and, and New York is, is no exception there. Okay, so we'll keep going. All right, so with all of those I items in place, again, now is really working on uh, building out the recruitment team, and we're in a very good rhythm. We meet every single 
a week at least once plus uh, we're, we're chatting throughout uh, slack you know a, a, anytime uh, I have uh, the access and my team has access to you know the people dealing with the drivers but also just even yesterday for example I sent Jason a slack message there was a question on Facebook uh, you know we had no idea how to be able to answer so we got the answer from him and and responded right away so it's been a really good relationship and uh, you know we're in a, a very good rhythm there so just to uh, go into the next uh, couple slides so yeah what we're able to see here is clearly how many MQLs, SQLs there are. So this is, I realize again, fairly tiny and I've just stripped away some of the data here, but we're okay sharing some of this. So this is a roll up. And again, this is several months ago, but this was a year to date. And what we're able to look at is that there was 160 email contacts and the eight, you know, how many MQLs there were, how many SQLs, and then we're able to see our ratio. So basically what we're now able to identify is that for every, M, uh, MQL, almost 40% of those are becoming SQLs. And then uh, this I, I feel is really uh, quite impressive, but anytime that Sunwell is dealing with a sales qualified lead, so a, a qualified driver at this point at least, and it hasn't changed uh, too much, uh, 20, almost 22% of the time. So one out of five, they're actually uh, closing that driver and, and getting them in a truck, which is really quite uh, outstanding given the environment that we're, we're all working in right now. Um, and then uh, this is a, one of the numbers that we would speak about most at the very bottom. What we're able to look at is the advertising cost per hire. So, you know, I, I didn't want to ask everyone what their, their ad cost per hire or total cost per, per hire uh, in, in the poll, but uh, I'm sure many of you know that number. But uh, we've been able to actually reduce this quite a bit working together. And rather than, again, just, uh, and Jason, maybe I'll let you comment on that, but, you know, it, it is very consistent around that $1,500 or $1,600. Uh, per hire. Now that does not include uh, overhead for the Sunwell team, you know, the safety training, you know, to onboard a driver it does include our, our cost. But again, that's a true advertising cost for every driver. So Jason, you know, as you're able to see these numbers, you know, anything you'd like to share specific to, to that? Well, I mean, we've been really impressed, right? I mean, when, when we were taking a look at doing uh, driver recruiting on our own, we figured that the ad cost to hire would, would be probably around $5,000. One of the things that we actually did is we put in a referral program that, that used that figure. We said, hey, if you refer somebody to us as, an, as a Sunwell employee and that uh, is hired as a driver, we're going to pay you $5,000. And we did that over a course of time. We obviously wanted to keep the driver on working for us for a year in order to for the person to earn that. But that person would also be uh, their, their mentor. And that's actually transformed into a very good a driver referral program. So we have some drivers that refer two and three other drivers to the company and that's worked. But that $5,000 was kind of sticking in our head. So as we got through this and noticed that, you know what, our cost to hire using this methodology is far lower than that. And I think that we were probably at or less than what the market cost to hire a driver is. So if we say, well, your ad spend is sixteen hundred and sixty four dollars you know probably the time that we're spending uh, uh on the on the phone with the driver and then getting them in and doing a test run with them and then working with them to uh onboard and and get productive you know i would uh, i would estimate that we're probably somewhere around that twenty five hundred dollars to three thousand dollars a driver per hire so we're very very happy with uh, with those numbers yeah and i, I think jason your your comments about uh, implementing your referral program it is uh, again another one of those you know testaments to you and your team there that you know you saw an opportunity and and there wasn't a whole lot of back and forth and discussion it was pretty clear that it would have an impact and you guys just launched that and yeah i believe one driver um since this started should have their third like they'll, they'll have three bonuses coming right it's fifteen thousand yeah. us and an additional income the drivers earning through this program right and then you get the word of mouth from that when people are, are hearing it so yeah that was that was great that you got that in place um, anyway, I'm sure there's probably some questions on that, but we'll deal with questions in just a moment. I'm almost uh, through everything here, but yeah, really important slide because this is again measuring everything that we're doing and looking at the results of how many drivers are, are uh, being put in place and, and then ultimately what is our cost. Okay, uh, so let's keep moving on here. All right, so just to again start wrapping up here, a couple of the results that uh, we've seen. Again, we really spend as little as possible to generate the, the results on a weekly basis. So that form that or that Excel spreadsheet I just showed you, every 
uh, Tuesday morning when our teams meet, we're going through all of those weekly numbers. How many unseated trucks do they have? How many local OTR um, and uh, regional drivers do they need? How much did we spend on Facebook? How much on Indeed and, and so on? Um, and then, you know, we look at the first year value. So again, at 264,000 uh, per drivers and basically, and this again is several months old now, uh, this deck is from from the conference, but uh, yeah, 3.2 million in first year uh, value, right? In, in terms of, of the revenue there. And my next point here, when you look at how many years a driver will stay with Sunwell, uh, again, the, the positive benefit on, on the company is really quite uh, substantial. And I'm not sure if it was in the deck, I might have missed it, but I, I remember uh, Jason speaking with uh, David on your, your team originally when we first went from having four unseated trucks to zero, you know, and, and that was a, a, you know, a contribution of, I believe it was 70 to $90,000 in both saved costs and, and additional revenue by, by putting those assets to work. So it really made a, a big difference. Um, but now, you know, again, several months later and, and uh, you know, with lots of experience with our teams working together, we do have a, a marketing machine in place now so if they were to have a new role come up or they're operating in a new region I know there's big growth plans right with uh, Sunwell uh, or even some other types of uh, recruiting again the the mechanism and, and the technology and and the messaging are in place so we can ramp things up and ramp things down uh, as as the business needs uh, change and, and evolve so so that's uh, that's where we're at there I, I'm not sure, Jason, if you have anything else you'd like to share on this, and then we can probably move into questions here for the last uh, several mi minutes here. Well, I think there's there's one more uh, slide that you have one more uh, slide, okay. that you might want to share there. Oh, yeah. yes, great. Thank you, Jason. Okay. All right. So the uh, last couple of uh, learnings and recommendations. Um, this is, I think, an uh, important one here is that, uh, as you've heard us speaking, uh, that we are really treating this as a function of uh, sales and, and not administration. And I know various companies here, some HR manages uh, driver recruitment or there may be a dedicated recruitment team or marketing will have a role. However, it's done within a company. All, all I'm suggesting here is that we have people that are sales minded that are dealing with the drivers uh, more so than uh, ad administrators. Um, you know, because it, again, it really is uh, a selling environment, right? When a lead comes in, we need to get on them right away. We need to build those relationships, get them to like and know and trust us. And Jason, I know you mentioned that a, a lot, that, that saying, right? And, and we need to move people forward, but really have that that uh, that sales mindset, I think is, is really critical. Uh, having 100% buy-in is, is definitely very important. The nice thing with having a tool like HubSpot in place is there's really no room for people to hide. If someone is working in HubSpot and they're not doing their job, they're not creating deals, uh, we're, we're able to see that right away. Like if a driver was, was hired and they didn't exist in HubSpot, you know, how did that even happen? And it, thankfully it doesn't happen very often. That you're, again, the Sunwell team is really dialed in there, but that is the nice thing about having that system in place. Uh, I have touched on this as well, that it isn't a set it and forget it. It's, it's really, um, you know, interesting seeing that because you sort of think on one hand you could just turn on ads and, and let them let them run, but there's so many things that that change uh, outside of the needs. Like you know, Sunwell's needs may change, but also we could have a high performing ad in Facebook and all of a sudden it just stops for 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 no reason, right? Or there's an underperforming ad and all of a sudden uh, you know something comes up and it's working really well. Or we also had issues. Uh, Jason, remember this? It was probably six to eight weeks ago. You know, we thankfully haven't had much interest from outside of the United States. And all of a sudden there was like 150 applications that came in from uh, all around the, the world. And it was one YouTuber ha happened to share, you know, the, the post. Uh, so again, we quickly were able to work to be able to make sure that we could, um, you know, se segment those leads so that it wasn't bogging down the, the sales and re recruitment team there. Um, I you know, talked about nowhere to hide. And then really, you know, in terms of the data purity, you know, we, we have great data with within HubSpot. Anytime there's issues, we're able to diagnose it and fix it right away. And then that that one spreadsheet where we're looking at it every single week really helps us, uh, you know, in, in that respect as well. And, and then, you know, we've talked uh, quite a bit about workflows and reduced effort, but those are really critical. And again, the goal is to provide that personalized experience, but in an, an efficient uh, and streamlined way. Okay, 
So, so there we are. So those, uh, again, that would be some learnings and obser observations, but yeah, definitely, uh, Jason, I would love to be able to get questions uh, for, from all of you here. So let's uh, fire away. Or Eileen, do we have some questions that have been coming in so far? Oh, the chat is open. So if anybody has any questions, we'll take them. Okay. One of the questions I had was in the beginning, um, you shared uh, a process flow and the opportunity to do terminal tours. Was that something that you implemented? Is that something that you actively do for your recruiter, your recruitment efforts? Uh, so yeah, good question. And Jason, do you ask, would that be, I guess, part of the recruitment process for like the in-person interviews or? Yeah, for sure it is. So, I mean, we, we try to move these drivers through pretty quickly because you know you've got to find that you know five to five on Friday driver and he's he's sitting somewhere and he's been unhappy with you know the way that he got work in the last couple of weeks and maybe he's unhappy with the way the dispatching is being done and he's he's going to respond to a Facebook post and so the the, the the way that we do this is we try to move them through very quick and so from the time that you know somebody responds and fills out the initial contact form the time that, that we would normally give them a, a, a phone call or text or an email to you know gauge their interest to start up a, a conversation with them to the time that they fill out 10th street and then are in i mean that could all happen within 24 to 48 hours and so you know, if we have somebody who says, hey, you know what, I'm not really sure that, you know, I want to drive for you guys, but, you know, so before I go out and fill out this, you know, long form application, can I come in and have a conversation with you? We're always open to that. In fact, all of our uh, in-person interviews are held right at our truck terminal. So people are able to come in and be able to see right away exactly the type of equipment that we run, the environment that we have, and the, and the, and the people, including logistics coordinators, dispatchers, things like that, that they'll be working with. Great. Thank you. I think we have one more and it was, how do you navigate the new limitations on Facebook um, for the discrimination um, limits that they have with profiling drivers and, and regions and ages? How do you navigate around that? Yeah, good good question. Actually, I did make a comment that some people might have caught just in, in, in passing, but yeah, that was something that happened, well, as I said, Facebook's constantly changing like a lot of other uh, platforms. Um, but yeah, there, there was a day where you could be very, very targeted uh, on who exactly you're looking for. But the reality is now, and I understand why it is, although it's, it's challenging, is uh, any time that you are targeting a specific type of uh, person or skill set, that means you're excluding people, right? And you know, the, the challenge is you know, for a trucking company hiring truck drivers, you know, we, we can't be too tailored. And let's say you owned a, a birthday party and you sent out like princesses, you know, to uh, birthday parties, like you, you, you can't really be too specific in who you're looking for for that, right? So that is definitely a challenge. But uh, what we typically do is anything that is an explicit um, call to action for recruitment, then what we would use is a special ads audience. So for example, all of the job posts those are all flagged as a special ads audience. So it's actually checked off that it is an employment ad. Um, and then we are able to select the region, like we're able to say that we want uh, to be uh, in West Seneca plus 30 mile uh, radius, you know, and same thing around Syracuse or Rochester, that sort of thing. So we're able to do that. But yeah, we can't say we only want this certain age group or this, this type of uh, gender. Um, so any j actual job ads are, are tagged as such. However, on the, the post that I showed you earlier, where it's just like, say, uh, Chris, you know, telling his story about how uh, he was a counselor and COVID turned his life upside down. And he found out that, you know, he comes from a, a long line of uh, a trucking um, and now as a truck driver now with Sunwill, and we're using that and telling his story. That isn't one that it's not necessarily a clear call to action that it's an employment ad so we wouldn't we wouldn't have it uh, tagged as such uh, we've never come across any issues uh, uh, with that uh, where an ad after it's been running has been flagged and as a special ads category and uh, that it won't run um, we have had ads that are flagged even though they're done properly sort of uh, weird there's lots of glitches in facebook um, as facebook specifically where we'll have a job ad and it expires and then we renew it and then it flags us because it's an employment 
an employment ad and it, we didn't check it off as an employment ad, but it's actually in the job platform in Facebook, but, but the, their you know, machine doesn't really recognize that. So we just have to get it reviewed by person. They approve it right away and it, and it runs fine. Um, Anyway, hopefully that, that answers uh, that question. But yeah, it definitely can be, be challenging because I know years ago we were able to pick people that they had interest in specific trucks, they lived in certain areas, you know, they followed the you know, owner operator association in, in the US, uh, they come from you know, whatever other interest, but yeah, it's, it's not quite, uh, quite that way anymore. You know, I think too, I think Facebook, I know does a pretty good job of, of you know, retargeting the people who are looking at those because I, I just went on Facebook to take a look at some old transportation and what we were doing and, and, and the work that you were doing and some of the videos and stuff like that. And almost as soon as that happened, I started getting uh, uh, job ads for every other trucking company that was in my, you know, in my locale. So, um, you know, I, I think Facebook does a very good job of, of targeting, you know, those people who, who have the interest once they, once they know uh, that, that the interest is there. And, I, and I'll say the other thing too, with respect to some of the content, some of the content that we're creating, a lot of the videos that we're creating, our intention is to cast a very wide net with respect to who, the type of people that we want to come work for us and let them through the content begin to self-select themselves into the right role. So, you know, it, it, it works both ways, um, with, you know, with respect to how we get that rap candidate in, in, into the seat. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a great point there. Yeah, we have very few people that uh, they're like, we don't get comments in Facebook. They're like, oh, I'm a, a bank teller and want to be a truck driver. You know, like we don't, you don't hear too much of that. So as much as we can't be too targeted, uh, uh, thankfully and amazingly, uh, Facebook, uh, oh, obviously they, they know a lot about uh, all of us, right? It's not the, uh, not kid anyone, but uh, yeah, they're definitely good at putting us in front of the right people there for sure. Yeah, and what, what I will add to this, and it wasn't asked, but one thing that I really, really like about the Facebook environment is that we, it's, it's just so amazing in, in the online world, the relationship that you can build with someone through texting and they've never ever met you, but they, they come in or they apply and they already like you, right? And they already, you know, like how they've been treated. They've already had a positive experience so different than, you know, in the olden days of just firing off your resume by fax or something and, and knowing nothing about the company. So that, that I think is really helped a lot when we do get the right people. Like, uh, again, I, maybe companies are doing better than 20, closing 22% of qualified drivers, but that, that it seems pretty outstanding to me. And I, I think a lot of that is just that people are coming in already liking and knowing and trusting Sunwell. Great. Well, thank you so much, Jason and Lionel, for telling your story and sharing your insights with um, the TMSA group. Also, um, want to encourage everyone, again, to go to tmsatoday.org to learn more about upcoming webinars and to um, be part of this incredibly collaborative group that shares a lot of ideas and best practices for the transportation and logistics industry. And we hope to see you again soon at an upcoming webinar. Have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Well, thanks, Jason.